I got nothing, Frank. Thank you, Pat. Hey, my name is Frank Gallo. I'm the announcer for the Pat Ocho POS with co-host Bobby Tamboro and Pat Oates. And our special guest tonight is comedian and owner of art Slave. entertainment. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Andrew Glessner. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I know I screwed it up. Ah, Give awesome me a little hint into my ear. Thinking Art Entertainment. Ah, I wasn't thinking. From Thinking Art Entertainment. And how a laptop works. Andrew Glessner. Ah, that's cool. I whispered to him. Only he and I heard. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, did that, was just hear that? Frank. that was probably the worst one yet. Did, did Frank just have a stroke on camera in live time? I, 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 I might have. I had I had one let before. I might as well have another one. Yeah, but that was that was terrible. It was awful. That was, it was awful. You introduced yourself well, and that was it. Well, I, you know, I could do like, I'm Frank Bergallo, the announcer, and here's some bullshit. That's what you did. <laughs> the rest right. doesn't matter. What the fuck was that? <laughs> We're gonna try it's that late again. For you, we usually do seven thirty. I'm gonna right. put. I'm going to put the team on my back on this one, and I'm just going to do all three rolls. Everybody ready? Yeah, do it. All right, guys. I saw a shirt today that said, Jesus is God, and I thought somebody was trying to spoil the Bible. That makes me a piece of shit. And this is the POS Show with your announcer, Frank Mergallo, your host, the lovely and talented Pat Oates, his co-host, Bobby Tamburo. And tonight, the boys are pleased to be joined by the hilarious comedian, Andrew Glessner. You may know him from his media productions company, Thinking Art Entertainment. Nobody Pat, knows me from Take that. it away. <laughs> well, are you taking it away? Are you Pat now? No, I just brought it to you. I, I felt like, honestly, I hate oh. to critique you, but you threw the ball low energy to Frank. It's a great joke. He wasn't ready for it. Got caught. He caught your low energy. Kind of delivered it through the whole intro. And I just wanted to start start on a good note. We got Andrew Glessner. I love working with Glessner. You, you started the your intro with a joke you just did in our last podcast. Oh, well, you know, it was a great joke. So if it's that good, it was good it twice. We don't get we don't a lot know. of crossover. No one's seen it. We don't get a lot of crossover. That's all we get is crossover. <laughs> it's the same eight <laughs> fucking people. <laughs> Same eight great people. They critique everything. I've been yelled at about my reading on this show. I read without n- enough gumption or gusto, like you just said. So, yeah, I'm going low energy because I've been yelled at for my energy. And I knew Frank was going to fuck up the intro, and that was the best joke there was going to be. So why would I go to anything else? Frank was going to fuck up, so I was going to that. I wasn't critiquing you. I think Frank just wasn't ready regardless. I was just trying to soften the blow for him. He may have actually just had a stroke. If he had, dies by the end of the episode, I don't want his last thoughts of me to be me bullying him. I screwed up. I admit so it. If he's dead, I'm your biggest big worry is that he's not going to think well of you? All right. Well, Andrew, this is your first test. Who is the POS in this situation? Is it Pat for just being lovely and wonderful? Is it Frank for really dropping the ball, or is it me for trying to save the day? Um, Andrew, oh, before before you answer, let me give you a little background. And then Normally, I'm going to give you some too. I get days notice who the guest is and what the introduction is, so I could practice in front of a mirror. And you still and give my up. bet, my best introduction possible. I got it on the fly. I'm going to be 80 years old. You get nothing on the fly at 80. Let me tell you something. Let me give you a little backstory, Glessner. Uh, Two weeks ago, Frank said there was a time before pedophilia and then winked at the camera. (laughs) That's a true story. There's no threat for that. (laughs) And I'll stand by that statement. Like a time before the word or a time before the crime? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> it's kind I of refuse, like if a tree, if a tree I falls in the forest. I refuse to answer that. I refuse to answer that on the grounds that might incriminate me. Okay. And which one was when you were a child? <laughs> oh God, that no, pedophilia did not exist. It does really. It does really. I, I think it might have. 
kind of a tree fall in the forest situation. No, it's looking up to an uncle. That's all it was. He's got to look up. He's looking up from the to a priest. Oh, God. Or to a horny nun. It was one of those. I think the latter was a lot less common. That never happened. If, uh, if there isn't a word for a crime, can you commit the crime? That's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it. Right. Is it a pedophile? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Yeah, it was yeah, way before still a murder. <laughs> I just made that guy stop breathing. It wasn't murder. We haven't invented that yet. It's not a word. I'm just fisting that boy. It's not illegal. I think Bobby's the piece yeah. of shit because he made that background. He caused Frank's blood pressure to spike. Yes. Yeah. It could be me. I've a. Uh, I I do use this. I put a story up once with our like promoting that the podcast was coming out, and it got quadruple the views anything I've ever put on a story, ever got. So. I know it's kind of a shitty move to use sexy women as your background, but it also says more about the audience than it does about me. Frank, you came from an era when it was okay to use women for sex. What do you think? I think there's nothing to matter with it. I mean, they're, they're firm, but they have some elasticity in it, which I enjoy. Sometimes they get squeezed between your head, you know, and so, so I think you got a lot of things going on with it. Fair enough. I'm back on his side now, honestly. (laughs) Uh, One thing we learned with Mark last week, Frank, you remember this when we talked about with Mark last week? What did we talk about? The cake and the slippery slope. No. And all that? No? I just had to remember it. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. (laughs) Want to fill me in with the... Yeah, uh, to catch everybody up, uh, we had a guy on Mark last week, and the story was a bodybuilder had sex with... Or bodybuilder was divorcing his sex doll to marry two other sex dolls. And it kind of led to the idea of, like, where people want to go today is, like, that wasn't even the right story. My bad. It was when the cops got arrested, the black woman, for talking on her phone too loud. You remember that one, Frank? Remember that yeah. one? Yeah. So Pat brought up the brilliant idea. Just send black people to arrest black people. And I was like, you know, we could take that a step further and then they could have their own schools and water fountains. And, you know, Frank pointed out separate but equal worked pretty well in his era. Why not keep it going now? And uh, I, I think like we're seeing like the extreme being pushed back the other direction and leading to the same results. And it, it, something I've come up with, I want to get booked in Brooklyn and it's a pretty woke scene. And uh, to do that, you kind of brought to bring something more to the table than just being a straight white comedian. So I kind of want to bring back the performing bearded lady. There you go. Because it feels like the least amount of work I could do to make one of those boxes checked off and feels like, you know, just go up and tell my exact same jokes in a dress. Well, yeah. And who are they to tell you who you are on the inside? Yeah, exactly. Right. You really can't question anybody. You're no. really not allowed. Not at all. You're literally not allowed. Yeah. So who's the piece of shit? Is it me for wanting to dress up like a woman just to get stage time? Is it? I think it's the entire woke stand-up industry of Brooklyn. Thank you. Frank, who's the piece of shit? Um, I thank you for, uh, for taking advantage of the fact that you look like a Middle Eastern woman. <laughs> Can you really call me a piece of shit for appropriating the Middle Eastern culture when you dressed up as a sheik multiple times? Yeah, that, that was at a different time, number one. Number two, there was a purpose of me doing that. I mean, you dressing up as a bearded lady. Uh, a political Brooklyn, statement. Telling Obviously, jokes is a political you know, statement. Well, I made it a political statement. But it's, <laughs> I think yeah, you made it a bad comic telling jokes in a dress. That's all. You were a bad tennis player playing tennis in a right. Outfit. I never said I was a great tennis player. Old man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot <laughs> like you. All right, let's get to our first story. Pat, you want to chime in? Who's the piece of shit? Is it me? You're all pieces of shit. I don't know what I just listened to. It was just two of the same asshole bickering. I don't. You really are father and son. It's annoying as fuck. I don't. 
I don't know what you're talking about. One, one wants to be a tranny for a comedy. The other one thinks he played tennis. You're both just <laughs> things I have to carry every show. That's all it is. Well, I'm right. the piece of shit for letting you two meet each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's do our first story. And this has nothing to do with Pat's in a Oh, real quickly, read. I'm going to just leave this right now. Oh, real quick. Hey, my internet's not working. Right, well, so Bobby's going to do the reads. It's not because Rebecca says I can't read. We're not cowering down to that, that power Nazi who's going to tell us how to run our shows. Rebecca, we love you. I'm kidding. I love yeah, you, Bobby's Rebecca. Bobby's going to read because my internet's shitty. So first story, non-binary Alaska Airlines employee says uniform policy is discriminatory. Boy, you really got me between a rock and a hard place on this one, Pat. <laughs> A non-binary Alaska Airlines flight attendant is alleging that the company's uniform policy discriminates against workers who do not conform to gender stereotypes, according to the American Civil Liberties Union. When I am working as a flight attendant instructor and allowed to wear regular business attire, I am not forced into Alaska Airlines male or female uniform policies, neither of which fit me because I am non-binary. Seattle-based Justin Weatherell said it in an ACLU news release. So basically, somebody is suing Alaska Airlines for making them choose which uniform they're going to wear because it doesn't fit their nine binary standards. Who is the piece of shit in this story? Is it Alaska Airlines for like, just let the employees wear whichever uniform they want? Who really cares at the end of the day? Is it the employee for making a bigger stink about this? Is it the writer of this article because it just keeps generating bullshit like this? The writer is Yaron Steinbuck. Or is it me for not really reading the whole story because I don't pay for the post? We'll go to you first, Frank. Well, that's, uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm going to, I'm going out on the limb here. And I'm going to say it's the progressive Democrats for, uh, for bringing this to the forefront. I'll be honest with you. I mean, this should not even be an issue, but they talk about this and, and everybody has all these equal rights, which I believe in, but it should be a non-story as far as I'm concerned. People should have the right to do what they want to do. And if the company doesn't have a policy, then, then they have every, every right to do what they want to do. So I'm going to have to say that it's uh, not blaming a political party. I'm going to have to blame uh, the company. Wait, you started by saying it was the progressive Democrats, and then we backpedaled to Alaska Airlines. Right. Okay, right. I just want to make sure we were there. All right. Yeah, yeah. It is weird. Based on your pro-pedophilia stance, I thought you would support the progressive Democrats, but <laughs> what am I saying? I didn't say it. I don't support them. I'm just giving you my opinion yeah, for no, this I story. Agree. That's all. All it is is an opinion for this story. I get you. Frank's stance of boys wear suits. God damn it. I get it. Andrew, what are your thoughts? Hey, so I just I need a little more clarification on that. Justin is upset because can't wear whatever they want. Yeah, it says that if it was just you had to wear business attire, it would allow them to dress comfortably. But having like two distinct uniforms for men or women forces them into a binary position they don't want to be in. Hmm. You know what? I think Justin's the piece of shit here. We've all had jobs. We've all had to do stuff we don't want to do. Like, I have to pretend to care. The least he can do is put on, or she, or they can do is put on clothes that ride a little high in the crotch once in a while. Absolutely. Pat, what do you think? I don't think you read enough of the story. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like you kind of read like two lines. There's no paying for the post. It's like, again, on Twitter, I'm like, I use the post. There's no paying for it. There's a whole thing. Wait, it's just Basically, read more. what the whole thing is saying is you have to hit read more. Yeah, and then there's a story that adds to it that makes it worth it. If not, we're just kind of commenting on the beginning. Okay, so here's the crux of the issue. Although the uniform policy allows transgender men and transgender women to adhere to the uniform standards that match their gender identity, Alaska Airlines requires all employees to conform to either the male or female category. Each uniform is made up of several pieces of clothing that flight attendants can choose from, 
but flight attendants cannot mix and match male uniform pieces and female uniform pieces. This means that pe people wearing the male uniform are not allowed to wear pieces from the female uniform, such as the scarf skirt or vice versa. The letter explains. So does Justin that, want that a pants and a skirt? Like, Basically, he wants to be able to choose like the top from the men's and the skirt from the women's. Well, yeah, because it widens out his shoulders Wait, better, but right. the skirt shows off his le her legs. I I don't know the pronouns we're supposed to use. Jump, yeah. Uh, you know we'll, what? We'll use I they to be safe. I solidify my stance. I think Justin's the piece of shit here. Andrew, you know a lot about this. It's work. No one's happy. <laughs> Just go. Put on an outfit. I know things about things. Frank. With the with the new that. information we just discovered, Pat, who's the piece of shit now? Anyone who works on an airline. It's not cool anymore to be a stewardess or steward or whatever. Calm down. No one's looking at you. You're in a, a magic machine flying in the sky. I don't care if you want to be a lady sometimes or not. If you want to dress like Hillary Clinton with a Mr. Furley scarf, who gives a fuck? Why does he care what they're wearing? They put wings on and they give me peanuts. I don't give a shit what they're doing. If you took that job, you've lost all your rights to be a man or a woman. You're a slave to the sky. Shut the fuck up. My counterpoint is this. I thought this was America. And we had certain rights that should not be infringed upon, including the first right, which is freedom of speech, which, according to Texas versus Johnson in 1942, the Supreme Court says applies to symbolic speech as well. My dress is my symbolic speech. Any uniform policy, anything like that is a direct violation of my first right amendments. Piece of shit is Alaska Airlines, in my opinion. Can I say something Alaska about doesn't that? Count as America. Fuck you. Can I, can I say something about that? This this man who read the story, read it two two sentences of three paragraphs, but he had time to research and find out and find out some ruling from sixty years ago that makes him look good. No, Frank. The Bobby, difference is. I'm no, a goddamn no, no, American. But, While you were no. dicking off pulling pranks, I was learning about the history and importance of this country. Yeah, the very yeah, rights yeah. that protect us from making the fun jokes we do. Yeah, you're not reading it off the teleprompter right now, right? You quiz me on it. He was dicking off while you were learning about Texas versus Johnson. That's right. Yeah, man. <laughs> Symbolic speech. It's hella important. Alaska's not America. Fuck you. Doesn't count. Fair enough. What year was that? Did you say what year was that? 1942. Well, okay, Alaska was, an, Alaska was not a state in 1942. But the First so, Amendment protections created still apply. Anyway, he was barely into his 30s in 1942. This is the same thing as we go with pedophile. It's before. No, it's not. Stop this. It is not the same thing. Stop defending pedophilia. We're going to lose our one sponsor. They hate pedophilia. They really hate pedophilia. So do I. I heard that. Apparently about not. <laughs> you love it. You referred to it as respecting an uncle too much. That's what you called it earlier. You said looking up to an uncle. <laughs> yeah, All right. Just Thank solid you. joke, but. <laughs> we're we're, we're getting too, too deep down the pedophile hole. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> A bear found New trapped. T shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bear found trapped on Arizona utility pole. That's a very tricky situation. God damn it. <laughs> Do we need I to know. read any more? Who's yeah, the POS post. The story? <laughs> Not the post. No. Uh, a bear got stuck high up on a utility pole in Arizona on Monday morning, but managed to escape unscathed with the help of an electric company worker. Utility company Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative was notified of the trap bear in the city of Wilcox and dispatched company lineman Warner Nobuder to aid the animal. Neo Bauer immediately disabled the electricity and ascended up to the bear in the bucket lift. All right, little bear, time to get off this pole, Neo Bauer told the bear. A 
according to video footage of the rescue. The worker used an eight-foot fiberglass stick to goad the bear into climbing down. The bear bit and grabbed the stick, but eventually went down of its own and ran into the desert without injury. Who is the piece of shit in this story? Is it Kenneth Garger, the writer, for that's a very tricky situation? Is it the bear for climbing up an electric pole and getting stuck? Is it this Neo Bauer guy who went up and saved a bear? Like, fuck it. How much is the electricity company paying you? You're not only going to get electricity shot through your body, you're also dealing with one of nature's deadliest predators. Uh, Or is it man for putting up poles where nature clearly deserves to be? Frank, since you look like you're falling asleep, we'll go to you first. Okay. No, I'm just deep thought here. I, I think, obviously, it's the writer. I mean, I don't see any problems with any parts of that story. I mean, it's definitely the writer who who, who tried to make this a human interest story. And um, and he got me, you know, as, as someone who loves nature and loves the wildlife in nature, I saw that he was trapped in a situation and the, the worker helped him out. Uh, and as far as the electricity coming, I mean, we need poles to have to supply electricity to the, in the desert. So I don't see a problem with that. So it has to How be the else person would your mother that wrote have afforded the story. To raise you? What was that? I said, how else would your mother have afforded the raise? You said we need poles for electricity, and I was making a pole dancer joke. Oh, I, mean, I thought you were making a pole lock joke. No. <laughs> no. Could be both. Pat, who's the piece of shit? How did the bear get up there? He climbed. They don't say it. They do not say it in the article at all. So the piece of shit is the guy who wrote this. How the fuck do you write an article and not tell us how the bear got in a fucking utility pole? They don't just hang out up there. They don't climb poles. I don't believe, I think this is a made up story. I think the guy had nothing and he made it up for a feel good bullshit thing. A bear won't, when you see a bear, why would one guy save it? A million people would have their phones on going, holy fuck, there's a bear on a utility pole. Why isn't everybody going, so whoever wrote this is an asshole because they made it up. So how the fuck does a bear get up on a utility pole? Okay, a couple points of information. There's a video linked to the article of the bear on the utility pole and getting down. Um, yeah, I think that's footage. That's doctored footage. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure you were aware. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think I'm think i reading it shit- too. I sent you the story. I know. I know. Uh, Andrew, did you say who you thought the piece of shit was? I didn't yet. You want to hit me with that guy's <laughs> last name though one more time? Because that was just a fun roller coaster to watch you go through. Newbauer? Newbauer? It started it's way different. B A U E R. Yeah, Newbauer. Okay. But it's not him. He got to poke a stick at, uh, poke a bear with a stick and get paid for it. I'm actually on his side totally. I thought the rule was don't I, poke the bear. Well, but he got to and lived. The man's <laughs> a legend. I think the bear's the asshole, frankly. You climb a pole and then you're like, oh, no, I can't get down until some guy starts poking at you. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I remember how this works because I'm a fucking bear. Like, no, it's def- the bear is the asshole here. I, I, I think we missed who the piece of shit is. I think it's whoever called it in. It says that the electric company was notified there was a bear on a utility pole. The story happened in Arizona. Everybody has a gun. It's always bear season. There's, there's your free bear pelt. Take it out. It comes down. Problem solved. No questions asked. This is America. Frank, you didn't like that answer. No. I'm mad about one thing. Frank, you know when it says bear, the, it means like an animal, not like a gay guy, like not your friends, like an animal. Frank hates gays. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unless they're uncles. <laughs> yes. Gay uncles is someone you look up to. That's, yeah, it's just someone you look up That's to. It's, some of my best relatives are gay. I mean, don't even bring that up. I mean, I have no problem with that. my best relatives. <laughs> Bobby, you came up with a better pun what than you this saying? guy writing a fucking article in two seconds. You should have should have started with, apparently you can poke a bear with a stick. <laughs> that should be the pun, not the stupid-ass berry situation. Fuck this guy. Bobby crushed it. Yeah. Frank, I feel like you're angry. Get it off your chest. Tell your story. 
Well, I don't normally like to tell a story when I'm angry. Okay. But I will go beyond. I apologize. That and, and let me and let get me let me ask you again. In the mood. All right. I came too hard, Frank. Uh, let, would you please grace us with one of your lovely, lovely stories? Oh, be quiet. Listen, last last <laughs> the last show, we talked about this famous restaurant in East Harlem called Rayo's that's been around for over a hundred years. Because oh, that story um, definitely warranted a sequel. <laughs> that, that, yes, I'm trying to make up for the last week's story. So, so it, it's it, it's a tough restaurant to get into. The fact you can't get into it, they have an unlisted telephone number. The only way you get there is you have a monthly table there that you could go to, and they 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 went bananas when they came out with their Rayo sauce uh, a couple of years back. So anyway, so I used to go there. I used to go there monthly with some friends. A friend of mine had a table there and we used to go there and we always had a great time. So the, the person that had the table said to me once, he says, Frank, why don't you bring a couple of your friends? I said, fine. I know a lot of guys that would love to go to Rayo's. So I invited Gabe Cooter, a friend of mine, and Arthur Katz, another friend of mine. So we go to the restaurant and we're having a great, there's eight of us, we're having a grand old time, we're smoking cigars, we're drinking before the food comes out. The food came out, everybody had a wonderful time. Frank Pellegrino was the owner at the time, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago, but that's him in the, the background. The Frank Pellegrino? Uh, you know no, the is, Frank <laughs> Pellegrino? <laughs> this is a different Pellegrino. Definitely a Frank Pellegrino. That's right, a yes. Pell <laughs> Pellegrino. He was an actor. He's been in Woody Allen movies, a lot of movies. Good guy. And uh, so what happens, I go over to him and I said, Frank, let's have some fun. Give the bill to Arthur Katz and tell him that the first time you come to his restaurant, you have to pay the whole check. And it's eight people, no credit cards, cash on the line. He'll take a check once in a while. And he said, great, let's have some fun. So he comes over, he's got the check. Um, I don't, it was over a thousand dollars. And he gives the check to Arthur and he says, Arthur, please pay this bill. And Arthur looks at him and says, excuse me? And he explains to him why he has to pay the bill. And Arthur says, well, what about Gabe? This is the first time he's here. And, and Frank didn't miss a beat. He said, Arthur, Frank, uh, Gabe is Italian. You're Jewish. You pay the bill. And so he gives him the bill. Arthur totally panics. He puts the bill down. He looks at it. And he puts his hand. He's a big guy. He puts his hand over his bald head. And he's like this. No, no. He's starting to panic. And he starts to sweat. And so we ignore him. And we're still talking. So a few minutes later, Frank comes to the table, brings over a chair, sits down. And he says, Arthur, are you paying this bill? And he goes, I don't have the money. He says, we're going to have to handle this one of two ways. Frank takes out a gun and puts it on the table and said, how do you want to deal with this, Arthur? And Arthur says, I'll be honest with you. I don't have that money. I think you're going to have to shoot me. <laughs> with that said, he put his hand in his head like that. And the seven of us run out of the, out of the restaurant. We went outside, it's a storefront, we're looking in, and Arthur's just going like this. So we left him there for about three minutes before we came back in and told him it was a joke. But he was dead serious. He really thought he had a problem. So who's the piece of shit in this story? Arthur Katz for taking it the wrong way. Me for setting him up. Frank Pellegrino for doing it. Or Gabe Cuda, who was laughing in the background because he was Italian and was getting away. Bobby, who's the piece of shit? Uh, let me ask a clarifying question. This Frank sure. Pellegrino, when he took over managing the restaurant, did he sure. keep using the same waiters or did he bring in a whole new set? No, no. This is a family. <laughs> this is a this is a family restaurant that's been in the in the same family, the uh, the uh, Rayos and Pellegrino family for the last hundred years. So, so they kept using the same servers. Yeah. The, the, the okay. bartender's name was Nicky Vest. <laughs> He's a good guy. I kind of like this, Frank Pellegrino. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say the piece of shit is Arthur Katz. And the reason why is it, before he, 
in addition to just being a complete stereotype, uh, he, he didn't even be like, hey, guys, can you hit me up? I'll get you back later. My bad. I didn't bring all this cash on me. Like, he didn't even ask you guys for a little bit of help first before he just jumped to eh, blow my brains out. So I'm going to go with cats. Okay. Andrew. I got to completely disagree with Bobby here. I mean, that's just a young Jewish gentleman acting like any young Jewish gentleman would. No, he was mature. He was presented he was... with a thousand dollar bill. Yeah. This is the seven, what seventies. No, 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 no. This was in, in the, uh, the late nineties, late nineties in New York. Still, you're walking around with a thousand dollars cash in your pocket at that point. That's how you become a statistic. I don't blame him for being upset. Honestly, at that point, um, thousand dollar yeah shoot me or i'm taking a shot somehow um yeah who's the asshole i i gotta say pellegrino is the asshole there i think pulling the gun out that's a power move i mean it's a joke but it's that's aggressive i think you're in a woody allen movie calm down that's right <laughs> pat there's two there are two pieces of shit one is frank Fucking Frank did this. This is your stupid prank. You're the one doing this. You will always make your friends fight. One of your friends had a goddamn gun. You're an asshole. You fired up a two stereotype piece of shits together and made it one could have died if you can get a chuckle. And you keep going to this restaurant no one's allowed to go to, and you're such a white privileged fuck that you keep going there and having pranks and wacky times because no one else can go there. And number two is Gabe Cooter. Who the fuck is named Gabe Cooter? That is the fakest name I've ever heard in my life. Fucking Gabe Cooter is a poor name. That's not a fucking Italian man. Fuck Gabe Cooter. <laughs> that makes a good point. That is like a stereotype sandwich. <laughs> yes. And then you're an asshole making people fight. You just caused race wars. Yeah, you did. Are you talking to me? Yes. You're talking to me? Oh, you're talking yeah, to yeah, me? you're talking to me? Oh, all right, I'm going to put me. something on the table hey, right now, all right? Hey, hey. All right, oh, I'm going to come oh, right oh, over so there, motherfucker. Italian. You watch it. I would beat this shit out of any Italian. All of you come here. I don't care. You're all just orange and dumb. Shut up. The Godfather sucks. <laughs> we, come in, we come in packs, Pat. <laughs> Yeah, you do rat packs. We get yeah. one black driving yeah, whatever. and they're all jerks. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but worries will never harm me. All right. So Sticks let's and do... stones may break my bones, but don't call sauce gravy. <laughs> <Ew -wee. laughs> uh, judge orders reinstatement of teacher who wouldn't use preferred pronouns. A Virginia gym teacher who was suspended for refusing to use transgendered students' preferred pronouns must go back to work, a judge ruled on Tuesday. Byron Tanner Cross was suspended and banned from school grounds after he said at a Loudoun County public schools meeting last month that he wouldn't recognize a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa because of his Christian faith. Judge James E. Plowman. Nice of the 20th Judicial Circuit of Virginia, <laughs> granted Cross a temporary injunction and a seven-page order and criticized the school district for the suspension coming only three weeks before the end of the school year. Action could certainly have take it, been taken by the defendants that did not rise to this extreme, the judge wrote in his ruling. Plowman, again, nice, said in his order that an email blast <laughs> to Leesburg Elementary School parents about the suspension was unnecessary and vindictive so close to the end of the year. Cross had sued last week, saying the suspension violated his First Amendment rights. The district can still petition for a review of the court order, order within 15 days, the ruling said. Cross's remarks came at a meeting about rights of transgender and gender expansive students policy in a school district that's already embroiled in a heated culture wars debate about critical race theory. My name is Tanner Cross. And I am speaking out of love for those who are suffering from gender dysphoria, he said. He referred to a 60-minute special that showed teens who are now detransitioning after apparently rushing their decisions. I love all my students, but I will never lie to them of the consequences, he said. I am a teacher, but I serve God first. 
And I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa because it's against my religion. It's lying to a child. It's abuse to a child. And it's sinning against our God, he said. The policy he objected to say to says that staff shall allow gender expansive or transgendered students to use their chosen name and gender pronouns that reflect their gender identity without substantiating evidence. Critical race theory has drawn national attention over the school districts as parents clashed over the concept. Yada, 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 yada. Who's the piece of shit? Uh, I only see one in this story. Uh, the school board for suspending him. Um, so we'll go to you, Frank. Who's the piece of shit? <laughs> well, I, I think we're spending too much time about gender equality and gender this, gender that. I mean, but if you want, I mean, there's got to be other stories out there other than our civil liberties being taken away from us because we're coming to this world one way and we want to go out another way. I mean, let's get on and talk about something that's more important, alcohol, drugs, and prostitution. You've got to have stories about that. Hmm. Drinking. Perfect example. Look at Andrew. You're going to love the next story. Okay, so I'm going to have to say, if anything, I'm going to have to say, <laughs> I'm going to have to say the school board. I mean, they know the laws. They know equal rights. They know the, 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 the um, what a, a child or a student has the right of is First Amendment. Everybody goes to First Amendment. So it's his First Amendment. He can do whatever he wants. So I'm definitely on your side, Bobby, on this. I came a different <laughs> way. But it is definitely the school board. They're a piece of shit in this story. It should not be a story. Andrew? Uh, the one thing that I was really enjoying when you're reading that story is how many times the judge just mentioned how close the end of the uh, school year it was. It's like, yeah, it's transphobic, but come on. It's got like three weeks. Um, yeah, I got to say the school board as well. I mean, I, you know, I think the kid has a right to live their life however they want. But at the same time, if you're going to give that luxury to the kid, you got to understand that your freedoms don't apply to just the people you like, you know, like it's that guy. If he doesn't want to call you that, he shouldn't be forced to. We live in America, as Bobby would say, whatever that Supreme court thing that you mentioned yeah. earlier was. That Texas versus Johnson. Yeah. We were back to the forties. 42. Bet. Oh, okay. Um, it's the teacher. It's the teacher. A hundred percent. It's the teacher. In terms of this, what happened to when teachers didn't give a fuck about kids? Why do they care so much now? When I was a kid, I don't think half my teachers knew if I was a boy or a girl. They didn't even know if I was there. Now it's like I'm gonna. I, I have to care about God first, and I need these children to know biological shit. My teachers were drunk half the time. They just got through on a paycheck. They didn't care. And now teachers have been proven they're not even worth having a job. The Zoom took over, and we get COVID proof, and we don't even need to have teachers anymore. So now they think they're all I and mighty and can go over there making a stance. And if you see a picture of this guy, he's like a G JV football coach looking motherfucker. He's probably not even a good teacher. Now now he's going to teach kids about how they should be born and not born. I'd rather be confused about my gender than be a teacher. That teacher thing is way worse for you than not knowing if you should have a dick or a pussy. So I fuck that teacher for trying to teach people. I'm happy he was fired. I'm mad he came back. And hopefully he can be on our podcast next week. <laughs> I, uh, I, I also think the POS here is the teacher, uh, but not for that reason. There's a very simple solution. Just call students by their name. It's very simple. And, yeah. you know, you don't need to be like, hey, he, come here, she, come here. Just be like, hey, come here. And if you have an issue with somebody changing their name, you're going by Tanner. Your real name's Byron. Like, you don't really get a argument there. You've you already changed there. your name, too. Yeah. Byron. So like, yeah. Just call kids by their name and don't ever use pronouns. Yeah. I've always thought that was the easy solution. Like, if you get confused, it's like, just call people by their name. They have a name. Yeah. That's keeps it no problem. And like a. You want to refer to him as a group? Bunch of little cunts. There you go. Do you guys think that he's a gym teacher so he can be a football coach? You think he's a football coach so he can be a gym teacher? I think he's a second gym one. teacher second, so he can coach one, football. Definitely. He wants to be that uncle. You can look No, up I to, think you know? he, his dream is to be a, a rope climbing teacher. I think he wanted that, but he only knew football. So he got in that way. 
Yeah. Also in middle school, my gym teacher just called us all a bunch of faggots. Like, yeah, that was what much happened to name calling. Hey, fatty. <laughs> yeah. Hey, stupid. Hey, smart. Hey, tits. Yeah. What are those names? They, they weren't discriminatory. We were just all that. Just equality. Yeah. <laughs> all of us. You're all piece of shit. It was perfect. Bobby, do one more story and we'll get the fuck out of here. All right, I got a story. Can I tell mine? I know. I sent it to you. No, no, no. I've yeah, got tell yours. Don't send the one I no, save the one I sent you for next week. Cool, cool, cool. So I get to my hotel on Sunday night. It's a little bit earlier than usual, 9 30. So I go out and decide to treat myself to a nice little joint. We have a smoking area out front. I'm out there smoking. And a gentleman comes into the hotel with a dog. And just makes an offhanded comment as he's walking in, like, oh, I guess we're smoking weed here. And I should have just let it go, but I didn't. It was a stressful drive into the city. I've been dealing with some shit. So I was like, yeah, it's legal. And it's a lot less offensive than your big ass hairy dog or the fact that you're wearing blue socks and black pants and brown shoes <laughs> and like just kind of tacked his physical appearance. I called him a Frankenstein looking motherfucker at one point. I said, I hope his dog bit him in his sleep. And then he went inside. Uh, who's the piece of shit in the story? Is it me for just trying to enjoy my, my joint in peace? Or is it Buzz Killington with his big ass gay dog? Frank, we'll go to you first. All right. I have to ask some questions. Okay. Uh, when you were doing your tirade and calling him all these names mm-hmm. he just stood there he didn't respond he didn't say <laughs> anything or is this whole fucking story made up in your head no this this happened he just kind of gave me the huffed, happened. huffed stare the huffed he just stared and huffed and walked away yeah he was a tall goofy looking white guy i look like yeah, a borderline probably, terrorist i'm breaking yeah. the law in his mind smoking a joint what's he gonna say next move for me he thinks to get up and hit him well i don't know i mean you got to respond to the names you called them that's what i thought but he must have been yeah you some- shit on his dog yeah, yeah i it, mean nobody wants anything. a fucking dog in a hotel the yeah. elevator still smells like fucking wet dog every white woman i know does yeah. no I don't know. Yeah. I think he's probably he probably right. wasn't. You're lucky he wasn't a New Yorker. Otherwise, he would have done battle. Oh, with you. he was probably that, from staying in was a probably Manhattan from Western, hotel. He was probably from, from Western Pennsylvania. You know <laughs> those guys. Just leave him alone. I that, I think I didn't say anything yet. I never Frank said what a piece of scrambles. shit. Is. You just basically <laughs> gave a mini story of your story. He just took it for thirty minutes. <laughs> I thought you said at the beginning of this you weren't going to cut people off when they talk. And that's all you've done to Frank this entire show. You have not let Frank be Frank at all. You're being I, the piece of shit and fuck your dog. Thanks, I, I would, I'm would. i going to have to agree with Pat. You are a piece of shit. For fuck you, Frank. Man. Shut up. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since I can't, since you're frozen, I, I don't know who said that. <laughs> it was Pat. Uh, it was I was Pat. letting you talk. Yeah. I don't know how this is possible. Pat, Pat is the piece of shit in this story. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, who's the piece of shit? It's whoever sold you the weed. Where did you get the <laughs> weed from? Uh, Rise Dispensary in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Fuck them. That weed is supposed to make you chill and you're an angry bitch. You got real mad, and you're more clever than that. Your humor is better when it's like a sniper thing. You were just being an angry Karen, and that's not who you are. Bobby should be having funnier stuff than that, just dressing down the guy's dog in him. Yeah, he's a dickhead who came in and said, what, we got a little marijuana here? We all know those assholes. You could have done it back in a way better way. You know you could have. Yeah, you were trying to chill out and enjoy yourself. But that weed made you that way because you're too funny to not be the way you presented it. And I think the weed was fucked up, so sue them. Thanks, man. Anytime. Andrew, what do you think, buddy? I like, by the way, the uh, totally unbiased summarization at the end there when you were describing the chain of events. Um, <laughs> I think it's the dog, you know? Uh, dude, I could not agree yeah. with you more. Like, you're going to let there and just 
watch your owner just get taken to the fucking cleaners without biting a guy in the dick. He smells like reefer. <laughs> I'm sure you've been trained to figure that out. Oh, dude, I'll choke a dog. I'm not afraid of a dog. Oh, no, I'm not saying you are <laughs> them within your rights. Although, if you're able to choke a dog completely out midway through a joint, it's not that good of weed. So I'm also with Pat. It's kind of the fault of the dispensary, too. One year for Christmas, uh, my, my young cousin, who was about six years old at the time, uh, hid in the basement during presents and barked to pretend like he was giving my grandfather a puppy. <laughs> And my grandpa just opened the door to the basement and yelled, Jack, if you got me a pu- puppy, I'll choke the fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> to a six-year-old. Uh, the piece of shit to me. I should have just let it go. The issue was the dog, though. I saw the dog and it set me off. It was like, that's way more offensive to the people of the hotel than me in the designated area doing something completely legal. Besides, what are you doing with a dog in New York? Like, you had to bring it on vacation. The only reason you bring a dog on vacation to New York City, Pat, and we know this from our good friend Bozarth, is to molest it. i buy that. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck him and his dog molesting ways. You know, what he needs is some Silk City hot sauce, right? I was, Yeah, I was, that's the only reason I brought up the dog fucking thing. <laughs> Because, you know, that's the transition. If you're, if you're the type of guy <laughs> always, who, always who doesn't know what to do with his free time and spends it molesting dogs, get yourself a new hobby. Try out hot sauces. And these hot sauces will give you flavor and an impactful punch. And what's cool about them is they don't really care who you are, what you look like. The only thing they hate is pedophilia. And they love comedy. They're super supportive. Lots of your favorite comedians have their own sauce. Uh, Pat, I know your personal favorite's Aztec Attack. Although you said that's been changing lately. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks. They've got lots of other great flavors. Frank, have you tried any yet? Yeah, badass you. I love it. I love it. I love the symbolic, you. Yep. The, the, the symbolic author cats reference there i think it's wonderful i put it on chicken and pork and i go to town with it i yeah. just love badass jew hot sauce. I, uh, I recently was told by a fan it actually makes a great bloody mary mix too oh okay. like it's great in bloody marys i don't know if that's your cup of tea andrew or uh frank but it's good for that uh that's my personal favorite too although i'll be honest i'm a sucker for kevin dombrowski's barbecue buffalo combination thing it's great uh, they just sent me a sampler pack. I'm looking forward to trying a bunch more. Here's the deal, Andrew. You love hot sauces, right? You know I do. But you hate when they just burn your mouth, right? Of you want course. some flavor behind the heat. That's what this is all about. They pack taste, flavor in. Now, you might be wondering, how could I save some money? I want to give this a try, but I'm not sure. Oh, of course. Very simple. Use the promo code POS, and you'll save 15% at SilkCityHotSauce.com. Pat, what's it stand for? Please. Oh, my God. Sauce. Yep. Please, oh, my God, sauce. And the second S is for savings. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope this was better than whatever stage time you were trying to find. <laughs> there wasn't any. Honestly, this was a blast. The second you invited me, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that instead. Nice. So. We were talking earlier. We were like, we didn't get a guest for this one. I was like, ah, I should hit up Andrew. Oh, uh, it's too last minute. And then I saw your Facebook post and was like, that's a message. Hit him up. <laughs> so this guy's desperately doing nothing. No, I was always <laughs> happy to have you on. Nice. Have you been getting any stage yeah, time in the area man. lately? I, I know you've been down in Hagerstown, I've seen. Uh, yeah, I just did a show in Hagerstown. There's a new venue in Hagerstown where they're starting to do some shows. Um, I've been trying to do my best to help give them as much information as possible, guiding that process to, A, because Hagerstown is a nice area, and it is just desperate for, like, good shows, and it just seems to not have a scene that can stay going. So anytime something starts up, I'm like, let me jump in and do what I can to help. Um, but yeah, it was a great little venue. It's a uh, Potomac playmakers. It's a playhouse. So it's an actual stage, but yeah, it's, that's sick. it was fantastic. It was fun. It was awesome. You got anything coming up you want to tell people about? Um, I don't think I have any book shows actually in the near future, but nice. uh, how about, uh, you just released a film, right? Um, yeah, we've got a couple different films. We are working on a bunch of other stuff, but yeah, if you want to check out any of our film stuff, you get a, the thinking arts entertainment YouTube page. 
check that out. We release a whole bunch of uh, short films behind the short. We do gear reviews. We try to have as much information, much fun stuff on there as possible. So, And I'll, I'll do a little promotion for you. Uh, we always bring in the guys from the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. Andrew's one of the regular hosts there. Great guy. A lot of fun. Uh, one of the guys who kind of keeps that scene going. There are a few guys who really have championed it. He's definitely one of them. A little newer to the scene. That's why I don't give you quite as much props as like Mike, who really holds it oh, down. Yeah. But you're definitely keeping it going. And it's awesome to see that. And really kind of creating a nice little niche scene there where there's consistent work. You know, people are getting up four or five nights a week in fucking Harrisburg. And it's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. We're probably getting there. So. What do you got coming up? Tell the people. Uh, July, uh, I'm sorry, June 17th. I'll be at the uh, Comics of Ogan Sun uh, on my Thirsty Thursday show, and Pat will be hosting it. Nice. Very nice. And that's a beautiful stage. It's a Maybe. great show. Maybe. Maybe. I get my second vaccination shot the day before. I might be dead. <laughs> hey, uh, if if you have to die, can I can I fill in for you? You got yes. it, Bobby. All right, cool. I'll be there June seventeenth. If if June Pat 17th. is can't do it, listen. If you're going, I died. <laughs> I died. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be how I'm gonna open the shoe. Well, Pat died. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Who's the piece of shit in that story? <laughs> me. Well, I'm gonna plug I me died. now. Check out the East Side Dave Show with Roy Harder every Tuesday at seven thirty over on Compound Media. Follow me at Bobby underscore Tim Burrow across social media. While you're over on Compound, check out How Could You Forget 420 and maybe keep your eyes peeled for something around the 4th of July. Uh, more details to come on that. I've got a show at Broadway Comedy Club July 8th. Come out to that one. It's a big deal. Uh, more importantly, though, Pat, do we have any other shows? Well, you could say them at this point. Why don't you know when these shows are? Why don't you know? I've given you the know dates. You seem like you never know. Are you going to be there? July 3rd at the Elbow Room in Connecticut. No, no. No, that's July, July 8th. July 3rd at City Steam Brewery in Hartford. <laughs> July 31st at the Elbow Room in West Hartford. I just that's got the those dates. Split. That's all My that bad. matters. Frank will be on the one. Frank will be on the one the 31st. No, it won't be fun. I've got an event right up for the latter one. The other one's up on comicscraftbeer.com. Mids, you know, tickets on both those sites there so make sure you come out to those shows we can't record two shows in a row anymore my computer is gay i know it's pride month and i'm sorry to say that but i can't handle it now i'm lagging and i hate all this i'm gonna say all these great things i'll watch your guys faces pause for three seconds and then go Ugh. so it's fucking annoying that's what we're gonna do that, that's how it's working um oh by the way people haven't checked out the patreon i know i've been doing four shows a week we quit we canceled my book you podcast I couldn't handle dealing with them anymore. Bobby, right after Dave was on our show, Dave texted me and said, I can't do this at the other show anymore. I'm like, me either. And we just told Brandon to fuck off. So I'm going to do my own version of it every week on the podcast. Where I'm going to take one segment and debunk it myself and have fun with it. And also tell some dumb stories of my own as well. And maybe Bobby will pop on once in a while. So there will be a fourth show still, just not with those assholes. That's it. Nice. And remember, guys, don't be a piece of shit.